Children's Church. Wow, don't y'all love the choir? <laughs> Man, you, you can tell, you can tell when people who are healed and in love with the Lord are singing to you. You know, I don't like having a computer in the pulpit, but the printer is down and your pastor needs his notes. <laughs> so put up with it for today, okay? God bless you all. Good to see you. We're going to turn in our Bibles to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, and we are continuing on into a sermon series that I know is ringing a bell or two out there, because last week's message has just about 50 views on YouTube. Now 10 are probably my mama, <laughs> and two are me, but I know some of you went out there and watched that sermon on forgiveness, and if you, if you missed it, uh, I really encourage you to go back and, and take a look because as the sermon series progresses, we're going to continue to build on what we've, what we've learned. And we're looking at how to, how to forgive. Tough, tough subject. Um, I, I realize going into it that you know, many of us probably thought a lot this week about forgiveness. And uh, yeah, it's a, it's a challenge because every one of us has been done wrong by somebody. Every one of us has been hurt by other people. It's especially tough when you're hurt in church, and those types of hurts can go on for a long time. But it's just like the choir was singing here. We want that stuff to be gone, don't we? There, it, it's, it's, it's painful and it's poisonous to carry around grudges and, and to carry hate in your heart because there's just, there's just no time for that. You know, what we have to do for the Lord is way too important to, to allow it to be sabotaged by something like unforgiveness, especially when the Bible's just dripping in forgiveness and messages of forgiveness, and we see our Lord is, is the Lord of forgiveness. And uh, I have people that I'm learning to forgive in my life, too. So don't think for a second that your pastor's looking down his nose at you and saying, well, all of you should be able to forgive like I can, because it's a struggle for every one of us. We're all in that same storm uh, together. The good news is we can learn how to forgive. We just need some help. You know, we, we just need some help figuring out how to, how to get ourselves there. And, and so if you missed last week, go watch that. And we're going we're gonna to look at a word that we encountered uh, last week as we go through 2 Corinthians chapter 5. And I believe I put verse 12, but I want to start in verse 16. 2 Corinthians 5, 16. And I, I want you to note the word reconcile and reconciled, and reconciliation, and, and how many times that is repeated in just this one passage. When I see repetition in the Bible, God certainly doesn't have to repeat himself. To, to me, that, that's always a signal that this is really, really important, okay? So let's take a look then in verse 16, and, and here's some wisdom for you. Therefore, from now on, we regard no one according to the flesh. And I'll explain that in a minute. Even though we have known Christ according to the flesh, yet now we know him thus no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Now all things are of God who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ. And here's what he's done, church. He has given us the ministry of, of reconciliation. That is, that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses to them, and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God were pleading through us, we implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. And that's the gospel right there, isn't it? But, but where we lay down on the job sometimes is failing to comprehend that reconciliation is now a ministry that we all share. You know, I, I know sometimes you, you call the pastor your minister, but how many of you know in the scripture we're, we're all called to be ministers if we're, if we're saved? And this is the ministry that no matter what else God has called you to, we all share this one, the ministry of reconciliation. But we'll need God's help to understand. So let's have a word of prayer together, and we'll dive on in. 
Father, we come in the mighty name of Jesus admitting, Father, that we are bad sometimes at forgiving one another. When people have done us wrong, Father, those hearts that, that are stepped on and bruised tend to stay wounded for a long time. But we don't want to live that way, Father. We want to get out from under those chains of bondage because we know Satan delights in it when, when we hate, when we act like him. But we want to be more like Jesus. So Father, help us today to comprehend how to reconcile, how to forgive, how to get on down the road. Because that's where we want to be with you, Lord, is in the blessings that you have for us in the future, not in the hurts of yesterday. Holy Spirit, have your own way in this house and teach us, please. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. So, just to bring back the, the word from last week, and it's a, it's a strong word, reconcile. It, it is a verb. It's a thing we do to reconcile. Sheila, can you see back there? I'm sorry, sister. <laughs> My font will be bigger next week, okay? <laughs> to restore friendly relations between is what it is to reconcile, or to cause to coexist in harmony. You know, when we reconcile, what we do is we, we patch things up. We repair the relationship. Uh, restore family relations, or, you know, maybe one old term for it is bury the hatchet. You've heard that over the, over the years. And, and it's beautiful when it happens. You know, we, we love to hear stories of people coming to the point where they can reconcile and they can, they can be friends again or they can, you know, they can be at peace and, and have, have a, a relationship once more. It's beautiful when it happens, but it demands of us that we as Christians sometimes have to be the bigger person. Sometimes it, it, it's on the believer who understands these concepts to be the one who goes forth with the olive branch. And, and we tackle this hard but good thing called reconciliation. And just to repeat what Jesus said about it, in the book of Matthew, Jesus himself said, if you are offering your gift at the altar, and there, you know, when you're at the altar, you remember your brother has something against you, leave your gift before the altar and go. First be reconciled to your brother, and then come and offer your gift. So that's a, that's a very, very powerful thing to understand is that God wants us to get our relationships right and he actually prioritizes it over worship. He says, if you got, if you got a gift, but you're carrying that load of unforgiveness, set the gift down. Go get it right. Oh, I see, I see on your face. This is a challenge for some of you. It really, really is. But you, you, you leave that gift and then your worship will be that much sweeter when you come back and you realize, man, that was a hard thing and I didn't want to do it, but now I feel really great that I went and, and was reconciled and, and tried to work that out. And now I'm going to offer my gift and it's going to be a blessing. So God wants us to repair relationships whenever possible. There's my caveat. Whenever possible. Because sometimes isn't it true that forgiveness may be in your heart and the other person doesn't want it? Now that's where we get hung up sometimes is we may be ready to forgive but the other party isn't interested. They shut their ears. They turn it off. They say, I, I don't, I don't want to be reconciled with you. So what do you, what do, you do? You know, some people can be very mean and, and nasty and, and there's just going to be no patching up with them but Jesus called us to be peacemakers. Right? He said, blessed are the peacemakers for they shall be called sons of God. That's a hallmark, Brother John. Is We're quick to call ourselves God's sons and daughters, but where you see it, where you see real Christianity at work, is when the Christian is the one who says, I'll go try to make peace. Maybe they'll just send me packing. <laughs> you know, maybe they don't want anything of what I'm offering, but instead we still have to go make things right if we can. If the other person rejects it and you tried, can you then come and worship and feel good about it? Sure, because you're not the one. You're not the one who's holding onto that grudge. And, and this, is, this is something that I did right when I became a Christian because I had wronged a lot of people. Many of you know that my, my background before I was a Christian, I was, a, I was an evil person. 
and caused a lot of a lot of Christians to fall and fall out of church and, and I got great delight in that. I'm ashamed of it now. But when I got saved, I realized I had wronged a lot of people and, and I, I made a list of them. You, know, you you should try doing this sometimes if you want to be humble. <laughs> I started listing everybody that I ought to go apologize to or that I had messed up with and relationships that were broken, and I ended up with a list you couldn't jump over. I was amazed just how many people out there must think pretty ill of me, and I made a commitment to call or visit them and try to fix it up. And the first one was so hard. You know, my, my inner pride, my, my eastern Oklahoma pride rose up and said, you know, the redneck within me got up and said, well, they don't deserve to hear anything out of me. And I, had to, I had to shove him aside. And then I thought, well, they're going to think I'm, I'm weird. And I had to shove that aside because y'all know I'm very weird. And <laughs> I just had to keep going, you know. That's, this is going to be part of it. But most of them didn't know what to make of it. And I found as I went down the list, it got easier. The more I practiced forgiveness, the better I got at it. But the other people just didn't seem to get it. Like, why? What? Why are you calling me and ask? Okay, sure, I forgive you. Whatever. You know, most people just found it to be really strange. But if I'm crazy, I'm crazy about Jesus, and that's what I felt like I needed to do. So it did me some good for sure. Now, that being said, let me put a little disclaimer right here. As I'm preaching and telling you to reconcile your relationships, don't think for a second that I'm recommending that some of you who have gone through horrific abuse and issues at the hands of someone else, don't think for a second I'm telling you you ought to go back into that relationship. Amen? No, don't ever recommend to an abused person who's been kicked around well, God wants you to go back into that, into that fire. You know, God, God wants you to, to go in there and suffer that again. Never would God want you to go back into that awful place that you fought to, to get out of and that you survived. Never ever put yourself back in the hands of an abuser. And, and remember my words from last week. You can forgive without forgetting, and you can forgive without trusting that person again, can't you? You can let it go on your end without throwing yourself back into the danger that you found yourself into. So, so please don't look at the floor and think, I can't do this, Pastor. They, they did me too much harm because I believe that God absolutely understands that. So, so what's going to have to happen there for there to be reconciliation? That other person is going to have to change. And, and you might have to wait a long time to see that. And I saw this so powerfully in my own family a few years ago with Carrie's dad. And he's passed now, but Dave was just, just a nice, great guy. Vietnam vet, shirt off their back type of guy. I mean, he was upstanding. But when he was growing up, his dad abused him hard. Beat him up. There, there was at least one occasion where his dad threw him through a window. Through a window. And when he got to be 15 or 16, he left and said, I'm, I'm getting away from this guy. I'm never going to talk to him again. And 40 years passed. 40 years. Can't really blame him, can you, after what he went through. And then out of the blue, his dad called him. And he had gotten saved, repented of his sins, and had been preaching for a few years. And in his heart knew that he had bruised and wounded that boy. And he called him up and repented and asked for forgiveness and wanted to reconcile. And they did. And they had a relationship for about the last five years of that man's life. But, beautiful story, but it took 40 years. Okay? So, it, 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 you may, maybe they'll never change, but if they do, isn't that wonderful? When someone who's evil and did you like that comes around that's the best possible result and the man was changed he really was and and we we love to see that so it, it may be that you 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 can't patch up a relationship and reconcile today but always have an eye toward it because when that opportunity comes maybe they'll come to you and repent and say i am so sorry for what i put you through don't think god can't get a hold of people I'm living proof <laughs> that God can change somebody. Remember what we just read? If somebody's in, new Christ, if somebody's in Christ, they are a new 
creation, literally reborn. But he just had to kind of take a, <laughs> take a step out of there for, for 40 years. And that was the only way reconciliation could come. Now look in your Bible, verses 16 and 17 here. Especially verse 16. Therefore from now on we regard no one according to the flesh. Even though we have known Christ according to the flesh, yet now we know him thus no longer. You know, it's important to not regard people according to the flesh. But to realize that in every person, there's a soul. There's a spiritual person in there somewhere, no matter what they're like on the outside. Do, do you know this? I know you do. That, that we don't want to judge people according to the flesh. We, we can't make a bunch of judgments about people based on how they look, based on how they behave, their their, their haircut, their body shape, their age. There's a million ways to categorize people, right? But what this scripture is saying, don't regard people according to the flesh any longer. Look past it and see that there's really only two kinds of people in the world. The saved and the lost. And it will help you think about people correctly when you look at that. Because he, he says, you know, the, these folks in the Bible, they knew Jesus in the flesh. But now realize that the spiritual relationship we have with Jesus is even, even better and sweeter than having known Him standing right there in the flesh. So he says, don't look at people that way either. Have a greater understanding that a lot of times people do what they do because of the sin in their heart. Amen? I mean, a guy throws his son through a window. Sin in the heart. Darkness, evil within. See, you don't look at his, at his flesh and say, well, I don't like that guy because I don't like the way he looks, I don't like the way he acts. You look inside there and you see people act the way they do based on what's inside of them. And people without Jesus have a big void in here. And, and, and that's why they do what they do. So... We want to look past that and try to see people in a spiritual way, in a spiritual light. And then when we do, we will see there's just really two categories. People who have been transformed by Jesus and people who have not yet come to the saving knowledge of Jesus. So, we see that we can look past some things, but if we see that people in that way and not regard them outwardly, we see that all people are people that Jesus died for. That's a hard truth sometimes, isn't it? Because let's be honest, there are people in this world who have done you wrong that you think, well, I wouldn't die for them. I don't even want to look them in the face again. I hope to never hear their name breathed in my presence. How, how, am, how am I going to love them? It could be hard. But we've got this ministry. He says here that we've got the ministry of reconciliation. And here's what God has done. Sin separates people from God. That's what this gulf here represents. is a gap that cannot be jumped. It, it, it can't be climbed down and climbed. There's no way across it whatsoever in our current state. Sin has exiled us from God. But what Jesus has done, He died and became our bridge. It's the cross, folks. And that's how we get reconciled to God. Sin separates us from God eternally. But the Scripture here says that what Jesus did was He reconciled us to God by taking our sins to the cross. And now we can have a restored and right relationship with God the Father. So if we're, if we're ministers of reconciliation now, look at verse 20. Here's how we do it. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. If you have the title Christian on you, guess what? You represent the Lord Jesus in your actions and in your words. And if you remember that, it might help you treat people with a little more kindness. 
He says, we're ambassadors for Christ as though God were pleading through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. That is our mission as Christians is to learn to be reconcilers because God reconciled us. And now we plead with people, be reconciled to God. It's a simple picture, isn't it? The way sin separates and then Jesus becomes the bridge. Anybody can understand the gospel. Anybody can understand that Jesus reconciled us and now we implore you. Which literally means like a begging. I beg of you, come to Jesus. Because it's the only way to have right relationship with God. Before you can understand how to forgive somebody, you must first be forgiven. But isn't it true that if God has forgiven you, then you ought to have a brand new concept of what forgiveness is? How much have you been forgiven for, Christian? Woo, what, if, what if we just had it, all of your sins listed out? No. My, mine would go from here to Centralia. Maybe the moon. I don't know. I mean, God has forgiven me so much. How can I not then turn around and be a forgiver myself? That's when you look most like Jesus. I, I was telling you a second ago, you need to be an ambassador for Christ. How are you going to represent him? In reconciliation. You've been reconciled, so be a reconciler. And try. Even if that person hasn't changed. Even if you still have a, have a hurt in your heart toward that person, it's good to practice reconciliation. Because God certainly practices reconciliation toward us. What sin will Jesus forgive? He'll forgive all your sins. And He'll do it without condition. Isn't that such freedom? That's what we want. So we can actually turn around and free another prisoner. Because when we don't forgive people, that's who's truly imprisoned is us. Remember last week I told you, forgiveness is the releasing of debt. It's not forgetting. It's not trusting them again. It's not compromising your morals. And, and it's not doing away with justice. Forgiveness from the Greek word ephesus is to release from debt or pardon. And last week I implored you and I implore you again, if you, if you just got that unforgiveness in your heart that you're having trouble letting go, turn their account over to God. Let the Lord deal with it because you don't need to anymore. You know, I, I heard a wise saying one time that to be bitter and to not forgive is to drink poison and expect the other guy to die. To not forgive is to drink poison and expect the other guy to die. You're killing your own spirit through the unforgiveness that is within you. You think the torment comes from outside, that it came from that person. You are tormented because of what is in here. Release it. You simply say, you know what? I'm owed an apology. I I'm owed justice. I'm owed many things. I, 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 I demand payment for what that person did to me. Dear brothers and sisters, if it never comes, you'll be bitter your whole life. But if you turn it over to God, you say, I'm going to release their debt. And that's where your healing comes from. Boy, the choir did a beautiful job, didn't they, singing about how yesterday is gone. The past is gone. We want to live free in the now. And we want to have the best possible future we could have in Christ. Wouldn't it be great to take that glass of poison you've been drinking and just pour it on out and say, I'm done. It's over. It's finally gone. Amen. So what about, sh should I implore people to be saved if I don't like them? <laughs> should, should I implore people to be saved if they're not just like me? Should I implore people to be saved no matter what? Absolutely, because all people need Jesus. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God and all need to be saved. And that's our message, the message of reconciliation. We implore you, 
be healed and reconciled in God. But on the way, we're going to try to reconcile with other people. And, and, and if we can't, we'll try or we'll wait it out. But either way, I, I'm not going to wear those chains again. I, Jesus has freed me from too much to, to go back in there and pick up the chains and put them back on me. He's released us. See, once you've been to the cross and you've experienced God's mercy, you see the world in a whole new light. And that's where forgiveness begins, is the, own, the forgiveness that God has given you. So takeaways from this. Here's, here's what I hoped you would get out of this sermon. To reconcile is to mend fences and restore a relationship. And if we see people as spirit and not just flesh, it'll help us to forgive. Sin separates us from God, but Jesus is our bridge. Amen to that. Praise the Lord. We implore you, be reconciled to God. And, of course, forgiving others begins with being forgiven by Jesus. And it's time for our final hymn with that. So, Brother Isaiah, would you come and help me close? Now, there's more to come in this series. We've got some things left to deal with, one of which is how to forgive yourself for your own past. Ooh. So we've got work left to do, church. But so far, so good. Have you learned something in this? Yes. Amen. I've learned through teaching it, that's for sure. Now I've got to go out and practice it. So we're going to sing hymn 154 as our final number of the morning. If you'd find that hymn and just kind of pause there for a moment. I want to give an opportunity to be reconciled to God. Whatever you do with your relationships when you leave here, I won't know about that probably unless you come tell me, but I know that there's bound to be somebody in here today who says, well, I need to be saved. I, I need that bridge to, to bring me to God and to reconcile me. Friend, it's as simple as asking Jesus to come into your heart and save your soul. And if you want to do that in just a few minutes, you'll have the opportunity during this final song. So let's have a word of prayer together. Every eye closed in the room right now. Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. Admitting, Lord, that we have a lot to learn. But, but we're doing the work. And Father, I pray that you would bring people to our minds right now who maybe we need to try a little harder with. Those old hurts. We don't like to pull those out sometimes, Father, but help us to see clearly relationships that you want us to work on. And Father, as you reveal those to the Christians in the room, I want to speak to anybody who's here who says, I'm still separated from God by my sins, and I want to be saved. In just a few minutes, we're going to sing our final song, and as we do, if you'll come meet your pastor here at the front, which is, which is going to be bold, I know, but Jesus never called anybody in private. You're going to come forth, and we're going to pray, and you can receive the Lord Jesus as your Savior. Wouldn't it be great to leave here today knowing that you're forgiven? that God has released you from the past, that's what you desperately need. And it's here for you. So come unto Jesus today. Father, I pray that you will have your own way in this house as you have already this morning. Bring us to a point, Father, of reconciliation not only with you but with others. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stand together. We're going to sing hymn 154. Just a couple of verses probably. And if you want to receive the Lord today and be reconciled unto God, you come in Jesus' name.
seated for a few moments. No video? It's after. Okay. No video? He said it's after. Uh, oh, it's after? You can't change things in Baptist Church. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, um, so usually our video, of course, it has to do with some kind of outreach. And the Annie Armstrong Easter offering, you know, we had three thousand two hundred twenty dollars. Is that right? Praise the Lord. And our our target was twenty five hundred. Is that right, Chris? Yes. Amen. All right. Well, let's keep praying that the Lord will keep challenging us to reach out. Father God, keep, keep us in your way. way. 